Good afternoon everyone, I'm Gary Martin and today we've got Chris on the channel again where I'm going to be giving him a bit of a playing lesson. Chris is off 18 and I've played three holes with him, had a little bit of a match and I've seen a little, a little few faults in your swing Chris which you know I want to help you with, I want to help you hit yep. your irons a little bit better but to do that we're going to be using, and you'll have seen reviews on this ball already, it's a tailor-made tour response with a with a yellow stripe on and I don't, I'm not going to review the ball because there's plenty of reviews out there, but I'm going to show you how you can use this stripe if you're a high to mid handicap golfer. And it's not just for alignment, it's actually to do with, you know, the first part of your swing. Because I get a lot of questions on this channel about how do you hit it straight? You know, what's the key to hitting it straight? And, you know, if you've watched the first video with Chris, you'll see he's not the straightest of his irons. And you've got the typical fault, Chris, that most handicappers, and I had, that, I had the same fault as Chris when I first started. I didn't understand how to control the club face. You know, I believed that the club had to arc, you know, around the body, and it's not, the club face has to arc around, but it's not quite true. So I'm going to show you how to use this golf ball for alignment, but also for club face control to help you hit straighter shots. Let's do it. So first things first, what I want Chris to do is line the stripe up with his target, and then from there, that's a really big, thick yellow line. It should be dead easy for you to get your, your feet your hips and your shoulders square like a train track. So we've got a parallel line. So in my head, target. I'm nice and straight there. Yeah, you're happy with that. And then I'm going to let you just take your drive here, but that's just one sort of way we can use the ball. Like, come on. Fantastic. And that's an absolute monster shot, absolute bullet. I don't know whether that's fluke because he's not hit one of them in the first video, <laughs> but he's done it with new ball. But you know, even if that didn't work for Chris there, you've gone through a good process, Chris. And I always say this with people that I teach, you're not always going to get the results off 18 to 20 handicap, but no. going through a process will make, make it that you don't hit as many bad shots. That's the thing of him play, isn't it? Got yeah. a good second shot. And even me as a... Even me as a low handicap golfer, it's still a good process to go through. I think this is going to be, I think this is a great design. Honestly, I think this is one of the best design golf balls I've ever seen. Just another thing, I don't think you're getting past that. <laughs> All right, okay, challenge is out there then. Try to go for it too much. He's out we a bit of <laughs> mind games. <laughs> It's psychological warfare. Who's gonna get who's gonna get a par though? <laughs> well that's the main thing, isn't it? Let's get bounding. I don't know, but it's long. I mean what you're saying it's 260 here. So Yeah. What about 270, 275? I'll take that all day. So where's the hole? So your line really? His sense of a line is to play for that yellow sign. Personally, I'm thinking hit hybrid and try and go over the tree. Are you really? I, that, that's what I'd be doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's up to as you, it, Chris. It, No, but as a course management, yeah. I, th I should probably be going... Uh, let me have a look at my watch. So what's that, about 120 yards? So considering, like, you know, obviously Chris has got a shot on me here and I'm possibly in trees and he's in position A, He's going to risk, you know, for, for, for no risk. There's no, why there's, are you taking the risk? You could plot it down there, make a five for four and you've won all. Yeah, there's no reason to go for it, but <laughs> in your head, this is one of the things you need to learn. Uh, play it safe. Well, look, if you're going to play it safe, I want to show you how to do an, a good iron swing. Yeah, yeah. So where are we looking for about 100? Well, well, I think you should be aiming for that sort of yellow sign, little, that thick tree at the bottom and it in, no, not something that doesn't go over 200 yards. So you could hit a seven iron or a six iron. It's only 120 of that sign. Is it only 120? Can't no, be, it can't, can't be. Can't be watch. It can't be. Can't be watch, it's 108 yards to that corner from where the, the right sign is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me get my laser. This is something if you are going to lay up, know how far you're laying up to. Is 176. Ah, right. So you've got ah. about 150 you need. I'll bang a hurry. Yeah, yeah, Diane. So, Chris's ball, fortunately, you've, it's, it's 
how it's finished, it's actually lined up to target, which is pretty fortunate. But one of your problems, Chris, as you take the club away from the ball, if you just set up to it, and this is why the line on the ball could help Chris here, especially off the tee, where, when he can tee the ball up, you use, what you do is you open the club face with your hands like this, so you're really opening it, but you, what a lot of people don't understand is the club will arc on the line of your shoulders, so you've got to focus on the leading edge of the club face, staying square to the ball. Sorry, we moved that way. It's okay. So when you're taking it away, that's got to stay square to the ball as you're taking it away, it's, but it's opening on the line of your shoulders, you see. Yeah. So it's all, it is opening, but what you're doing is you're opening your hands and like your that. shoulders. Yeah, you're rolling the club open. So set up to it again. You've got to try to feel like this triangle here from your shoulders. You're maintaining that triangle and you're keeping the club face square to the ball. All right, and then let your shoulders take care of the club face. All right, don't manipulate with your hands. So you just concentrate on rocking your shoulders, keeping that triangle and keeping that leading edge square to your ball. And then you, your shoulders will take care of your, your club face. They'll open your club face naturally on the line of your shoulders. Excellent, that's better. Well, look at it again. You know, you went through the right process. You didn't get the strike right. But if you concentrate on that, maintaining your club face square to the ball and using your shoulders, the club's going to arc on the line of your shoulders. It's going to be less, lo a lot less open and close the club face. You lift it straighter. Yeah. All right, so I want you to concentrate on that. Is this guy coming or what? That was terrible. So when I'm in trouble like this, what I'll always do is just have a very cautious swing to make sure that there's nothing going to interrupt the swing where the ears here have got branches. So I'm going to have to change and try to swing a little bit flatter on this one. Not so bad about the follow through, as long as it's not fixed. I just want to have a few rehearsals and check that nothing's going to get in the way of me swinging it. I'm going to probably have to use a little bit more loftier as well. We're just waiting for someone to clear. I hope you would use more loft there. More loft? Yeah, because when, when I'm in the trees, yeah. I'll I'll pick like a seven iron yeah. to try and keep it low and get it out rather than... It's a great question, Chris. I picked a five iron out, but because I'm having to sort of shorten my swing and obviously hold it you know, a lot lower down to play the shot, the, the flight's going to naturally come out lower. Right. So I'm, I'm going to have to use a bit more loft, otherwise it's not going to come up off the floor. So I'm going to go to a seven iron. Gripping down, it's going to reduce the height it launches. And because I'm swinging flatter as well around my body, you know, it's not going to be as steep, so it's it's going to come out a little bit lower as well. Right. And then my main focus now is to really commit to keeping my eye on the spot that I want to hit. So I want to hit the ball, then the grass afterwards, and really commit to that so I get a good solid contact. that near him? It weren't far off, were it? <laughs> <laughs> it was well out. It, it drew right round to him, like. A bit further than I expected. I'm not going to be able to chip this out, am I? Would you go for, like, a lower club and try and run it? If I weren't very confident, then yeah. Try and like just yeah. run it along the if deck a bit. If I were a higher handicapper, I might try and bump a little hybrid club. Because I'm thinking trying to get under this with a 60. Yeah. Is I can try I, it. I think percentage-wise, you know, higher handicappers, you ought to be looking at like a little, like a long putt with a hybrid. It's Here's that as I'm practicing with the 60. Very difficult shot to play this with a 60. Yeah. It's up to you, Chris. But as a higher handicapper, I know. Especially, you know, if I'd have been trying to grind the score out, I'd be just bumping over that hill with a hybrid. It's going to roll right, isn't it? So if I am here, I'd be gripping low on it, right at the bottom. That's it. Go down it a lot. That's it. Just a put motion. Make sure you give enough acceleration to get up the slope. Even if you go past the pin a bit. Oh, look at that. That was nearly perfect. But, you know, two puts, possibly one put. It's a lot better than if I could have duffed my 60 and here or thinned it into the trees. It's not going to wreck your card. I think if you practice that a lot, you could get better at that shot. Yeah, because I'd have been so easy to either get it into that bunker over there or in the trees or... Yeah, keep rolling. 
So this is where the ball as well can really be used well for aligning. Because it's not just about aligning. I see a lot of people aligning the ball up to the hole. It's about then getting your club face square to that line and getting your, not just your club face, but your feet, your hips and your shoulders. So now the most important thing for, for Chris is that he gets his body aligned up like a train track and then gets that putter up and down the target line. Oh, Arrow. Oh, he's done Boom. it. He's done it again. You should That's have how we do it, lads. He did it on first video, guys. We did. What's that? Is that four? A no, no way. One, two, three, five. Sorry. Five. So I need a. This is for a birdie for a half then. Unbelievable. I'm going to have to stop coaching him. <laughs> Oh, oh, nice. Just, just enough. Just enough. I did on Edgar's chair then. <laughs> I thought we weren't going to drop at the end there. So you've One got a bunker in fairway, which is probably about 240 yards. So if you're in your drive and you sit dead straight, it could be a bunker. I think it's risk risk reward. <laughs> These mid handicappers there. I think sometimes you have to let people learn the hard way. So. In theory, you would go yellow flag, yeah? Yellow flag, that's your target, that's centre at fairway. Are you wanting to do the one club one on this, or? No, um, we'll try, we'll finish this video off and then we'll do it one clubber. Right, so driver's gonna fly the 240. Yeah, driver's gonna fly at 240. You got a bunker 240, it's probably 260 to carry. And then you've Wind got behind, we got it. Wind behind, he's got it. <laughs> you have confidence in yourself, it will. <laughs> And that what, is a missile. He's got no fear whatsoever. There's me here, pro, with bloody iron, and we've got 18 handicap, a wallop it driver, 300 yards. <laughs> I don't know. So, so it's done. Callaway, for you. We're going to talk a little bit about this ball as well, because it's 40 pound a dozen. So it's getting into It's quite the, pricey, isn't it? It's quite pricey. Because if it is aimed at mid to high, you do lose a few. Well, yeah, there is that, isn't there? But it depends how much uh, you want to invest in your performance, doesn't it, I suppose? I think, isn't it? Yeah. So in my head, if you're going to pay 40 quid for a ball, why wouldn't you just spend 44 quid and get the best ball that they've got? I completely agree. So you've got your TP5s, which are about £47 a dozen. But the main selling point of this ball is alignment, isn't it? It's the alignment. And you've got to remember, Chris, it's a Euroframe cover. So whenever you... Whenever you hear the word Euroframe cover, you're looking at £35 above anyway. Yeah. And I personally wouldn't use anything else, you know, because for me, the outer cover gives me the feel and control I need around the green. You know, when you're playing them really lightning greens and you want that touchy shot, that's where the feel comes from, is the outer cover. You know, the inner, the inner layers are great for when you're playing your fuller shots, but, you know, if you've not got a good soft outer layer, you're not going to get that soft feel and control. So that's what you're paying for you're paying a premium for that but you know unless this line becomes available on a more of a budget ball we might struggle to get this ball into you know and I think higher and mid because chris says like you know if you're losing balls personally i wouldn't pay 40 quid a dozen no uh maybe hopefully in the future i'm a bit better and i don't lose as many i'll tell you what I you, could do, into it. you could possibly buy a sleeve and use these for your practice. You could use these for putting, couldn't you? Yeah, I've actually got the um, tricks and divides in the bag. Have you? And I use them on the putting green. Yeah. Um, Cause it's a similar sort of idea, isn't it? I think you'd learn a lot about your stroke. You'd learn to sit, cause if you're stood square and your club face is moving back, you know, straight back and front target line, the, effectively the ball should roll over, shouldn't it? Yeah, end over end. End over end. So you'd know whether your stroke's good or not. 
I f certainly think it's worth getting a sleeve in bag. Yeah, have um, a look at them. Especially if you think it drives that meter green. And even if it's just for like, you know, your, your best goal, because I think it really will help you with your alignment. And like we did with Chris earlier, you know, getting the club moving away from the ball cor correctly. So uh, we're going to continue this match anyway. We're level and Chris has just absolutely <laughs> bombed one. That's what you got to do, isn't it? <laughs> Gaz has forgot he's on YouTube. <laughs> about 85 90. telling me I've got 100 100 yeah you will yeah 100 yards guys if you're enjoying this video Chris has been giving me a bit of sticks and I'm a rubbish youtuber for not hitting drivers so up next all I'm gonna hit a driver and it's a par four that you can drive as well. And see if you can get past me this time. <laughs> so we've got 100 yards downwind. Oh, that one looks good. Should come in a little bit. Yeah, it's rolled on nice. Cheers. Let's go and have a look, see where the big lad's knocked it. Yeah, a little tricky one coming up from here, I think. I think it'll be a 54. Well, so, yeah, is that you, Leah? Yeah, I level th with green. I think that's me level with green. Is it rolling? <laughs> that, that's 325 yards, that. It's what we're doing here in handicap. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being off 18, that is just typical, isn't it? You, yeah. you drive a green. Do you know what though? That is the way to enjoy golf, I think. Oh yeah, there's nothing better than absolutely smashing one. I wish I had no fear like that. Because yeah, I, I got just... a bit of trouble now, but it's a lot more fun than hitting an iron and a wedge. <laughs> Quality. Love to see it. Just a 334. Corner of the wash. Aye. Sorry, mate. I didn't, I didn't want you to do us out of 10 yards. <laughs> Still a Hopefully get it just over the bunker and it'll run out. Oh, what a shot. Just like that. No way. Go on. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that was nearly an eagle. <laughs> That's why you go for driver gas. Risk versus reward. Who is this guy? That good, yeah? Yeah, you can have that one. <laughs> so there's no point in even putting this, is there? He's done Not, because that's there. Uh, this is for three. And that was for three? He's done me again. Come on. No, bottled it. Yeah. There's another one in a minute, isn't there? Uh, one down with one to play. So it's a drivable par four. I might just laser it actually, see how far it is. Uh, 280, I think. 280. Well, it's uphill, isn't it? And we've still both got <laughs> the tall response ball. Yeah, it's a dream. The best actually. Uh, because there's nothing worse than when you got one of these balls. Does it actually make you a bit more confident at your alignment? That you're actually checking it though? Yeah, it does. There's nothing worse than when it's on the tee and you're sitting there and it's yeah. not bang on. I think there's one thing, guys, with a ball. It does make, just remind you to align yourself. Because we all get a bit lazy, don't we, and forget. Especially when you're on like your 18th. Ooh, that time, right? It's in play, I Stay think. in play. Though. 
Yeah, I've seen it down. He hits the ball that bloody far. It doesn't matter where it goes. He's only got a wedge left. Right, this is my chance. Swing left. Right, come on, Gaz. Let's get this on. Short grass. Oh, that's a bullet. That's a strike, that. That is a bullet. Yeah, I think you got past us there, like. It might be missing me just right edge, but it was a, a monster. See? And how much better is that than it than iron off the tee and then trying yeah. to chip? It did. I did enjoy that one. <laughs> <laughs> what so, do you think to that then, visibility-wise? If we've maybe it's not the best. I don't know. We've just been looking for this ball, haven't we, for about five minutes? Well, yeah. Well, three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was quite hard to find, wasn't it? It, it probably it, probably might not be the best for finding. Possibly, I don't know. It's cause the orange isn't as yeah, the, the, the white bit orange. probably. See, I were expecting the yellow bit to, or the green bit, whatever you want to call it, to be actually easier to see, but it's probably harder. Yeah, it was quite a difficult uh, find in the shadow. What we've, what we've got here. But knowing Taylor made, it won't be long before that stripe changes colours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Maybe, maybe a red line. 50 yards, I think, go right of the flag. Use me shot. Try and hit it off that bank to kill it. I think you should just put it in bunker and we'll take off. Eh, uh, no. Oh, I can Get put up. it in the bunker. Get up. Unlucky. Hopefully that can produce one of them wonder chips again. <laughs> <laughs> all you want in that. Don't want to be like you at St Andrews, do we? No. <laughs> mm. A little late time chip and run here. Roll out, roll out. That's a right shot, that mate. You can have that. Looks like we've tied the three up. One, two, three. So I need this for the off. Yeah. just not been it has it rolled out you've been good with lines haven't you yeah it was all right line it was yeah. just purely and simply not hit was it thanks for it graham chris yeah cheers every time i play with chris it's an exciting game we're going to be having one more game and we're going to be testing a club that's not available in uk yet till april chris has managed to get his hands on it and i think this could be the best club ever for a, for somebody who struggles with fairway woods you know, and longer irons, because this, well, watch took, the video, guys, we'll tag it. Took the three woods straight out of my bag. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you in a few days' time. Bye. Cheers.